what is the scariest paranormal experience you've had? Hi everyone, it's Em. I hope your day is going fantastic, and if not, hopefully these spooky stories can cheer you up. Let's get right into it. Story 1. Growing up, I always had a lot of weird experiences happen, but had a very overactive imagination, so I never thought too much about it. This memory stands out so distinctly because it wasn't just me who saw this figure, but two others as well. I moved into my house at four years old. It was a four-bedroom house newly built at the time, 1999, with one of the rooms placed right off the main living room area. For whatever reason, my sister and I always got creeped out by that room. Whenever we were home, we would always make sure the door was shut. It was just a guest room and we would tell each other how much that room creeped us out. This feeling always persisted in my sister and I, and it became a joke between us. When we got a little bit older and started staying home alone, we would still always shut that door and joke around with each other about it. Fast forward to high school, I'm 16 years old at this time. I'm home alone, and I walk by this room and the door was open. As I walk in front of the door, I suddenly freeze. Out of the corner of my eye, I see a black, shadowy figure sitting on the bed facing me. I turn my head and he's still there. I couldn't make out many details. It was pretty dark in the room, but I could see an outline of a 1920s style suit and hat with a shadowy black briefcase sitting on the bed. I quickly shut the door, opened it again, and he was gone. I didn't tell my family about it because I didn't want them thinking I was crazy but I immediately left the house and went for a walk until my parents were home. About six months later, my sister called me in a panic. She said that she just saw a figure in the room. I was three houses down, so I immediately sprinted over and found her in our front yard. She tells me that she went down to close the door in the guest room when she saw a man standing next to the bed. I immediately got chills and asked her, what did this man look like? She said she couldn't see too clearly but he looked like he was wearing an old style suit and it had asked if there was anything else. You notice. She looked at me and said, he was holding something in his left hand. Was it a briefcase? My sister looked nervously at me and said, I think it was, but how do you know that? So I had to explain to her what I saw and that really freaked her out. I told her she couldn't tell her parents because they were fighting a lot lately and it was clearly leading to a divorce and I didn't want them thinking we couldn't handle staying at home alone. She agreed she wouldn't. We never talked about it again. Fast forward two years later. I'm 18 and a senior in high school. My parents are separated, but too poor to move out of the house. My mom sleeps in an upstairs room and my dad sleeps in the guest room. I never thought about telling him what I saw, but my dad has always been a staunch believer that ghosts aren't real. I'm sitting in the living room with my sister and I was telling her how my friend keeps hearing pool balls clack in the middle of the night at his house. My sister jokingly says maybe his house is haunted. We laugh and then my dad pipes in from across the room. Well, you know our house is haunted too, right? I figured my dad is messing with us because he's always said that ghosts aren't real. I made some smart butt remark about how he doesn't believe in that. And I notice he's not laughing. He's dead serious. I ask how do you know? And he said, because I woke up to a man standing above my bed last night. My sister and I nervously darted eyes toward each other. Dad, what did this man look like? I asked quietly. Well, he was a dark, shadowy figure, but I could tell he was dressed nicely from a different time. Like, he was wearing an old 1920s gangster-style suit with a round brim hat. He also had something in his hand. Was it a briefcase? My sister asked nervously. The color from my dad's face drained. How did you know that? My sister and I then tell my dad about our separate experiences and we're all pretty spooked. We agree that the guy must not mean any harm because he hasn't hurt us. To this day, this single story makes me believe in ghosts. The creepiest thing is that we later find out that the newly built housing development was built in an old farmer's field. The field was about a mile away from one of the pre-pwned safe houses he would escape to if things in Chicago were getting too hot. No idea if it's related, but that's the only explanation I have. Yeah, it is pretty weird all three of you saw the same person in the exact same spot, but it must have been a big relief to know that the ghost wasn't ill-intentioned or anything. I honestly think that sometimes ghosts really are just people who are stuck in this realm of existence, and they have either no good or bad wishes. They're just kind of here. Like, they won't go out of their way to help, but they also don't try to do any harm to the current occupants of the house. I say as long as no one is getting hurt, honestly best to just ignore it as best you can and go on with life. Story 2. 
Okay, well, here it goes. It's gonna be a long one. My childhood home was built in the 60s, so not too old. I was a kid in the early 2000s. Weird stuff happened all over the house that my parents continuously brushed off as nothing. So when things would happen, i.e. one time during a sleepover with some of my friends, our electric keyboard piano turned on in the room next to us and was playing a tune, and we all ran to my bedroom. I was kind of desensitized to it. However, there was one recurring experience I had for years that always stuck with me. My brother and I shared a room until I was seven. I then moved into what used to be the nursery room on my own, and my youngest brother took my place with my other brother. Ever since I moved into that room, I had nightmares almost every night. I would go to bed normally, then would wake up every night after a few hours of sleeping. Something in me would just freeze. The first night this happened, I was facing away from the wall into my room. I saw a woman who was very tall in a white dress with billowing sleeves and long black hair standing over me. She had this blue light sort of aura around her that would light up my room. It took everything in me to slam my eyes shut and just squeeze them closed until I knew she was gone. Then I went back to sleep. I always slept facing the wall since that night. It still happened. I would continuously wake up, be facing the wall, and just frozen in terror, knowing she was there. I would break out in such hot sweats. It was unbearable, but I refused to move. I began covering my head with the covers until I got too hot. I couldn't breathe, but I just could not look at her again. But I always knew she was there looking over me. My room would always have this weird glow against the wall, and I knew she was gone when it went away. I always kept this to myself. I figured it would just be another thing my parents would brush off. This happened almost every other night from the ages of 7 to 12 when my parents got divorced and we finally moved out. It became just a normal nightmare slash occurrence. I would suffer through then go back to sleep. I remember in my new house, I was dreading going to sleep, knowing those nightmares were destined to start up again. Weird thing is, they never did. I can still remember them so vividly from my childhood, but I have not had another single dream or experience with that woman since I moved out. Fast forward in a Conjuring movie had come out. There was a scene in that movie where the mother sort of resembled the woman I used to see. I was watching the movie with my mom at our house and I decided, what the hell, and brought it up to her. How I used to see this lady standing over my bed almost every night in our old house when I got my own room. My mom went completely pale in the face and asked, did she have a white dress and long black hair? And for some reason, as soon as she asked that, I broke out in chills and tears came to my eyes. You saw her too? Apparently when I was a baby and they had first moved into that house, I would sleep in that same room, which then was the nursery room. My mom said she used to wake up to nightmares every night to that woman standing over my crib, would then turn to my mom and say, go get your baby, to which my mom would run to my room to make sure I was okay. I get chills even typing this out now. There was definitely a woman in that house. Hmm, this seems like another story where maybe the ghost woman wasn't evil or anything. Just maybe she used to be a concerned mother. And now that there was a new kid in the house, she decided to stay and watch over them. Although this one does sound much more terrifying than the first story. There's a scene like this in the Netflix show Haunting of Hill House, which I highly recommend. And there's a ghost like this that is honestly terrifying, but not evil. I won't say more because I don't want to spoil the show, but it is very reminiscent of this story. Story 3 When I was about 16 years old, my friend and I were walking down a side road to get to my house. As we were walking, I noticed a woman standing under a streetlight near the end of the road and pointed it to my friend. We thought it was weird that a woman wearing a white dress was just standing under the light in the middle of the night, and we were going to go see what was the matter with her. When we walked a few more feet in her direction, however, I felt an overwhelming sense of dread and decided we needed to take a different way to my house. My friends generally listen to me when it comes to stuff like this, so he agreed and we walked the long way. We would go out there every night to check, and every night there she was, a woman in a white dress standing under a streetlight, not moving. She was never there during the day. There were no signs or anything near that area that could look like a woman. Never felt anything any other time we were out there. We did backyard wrestling, and she was near the spot we would use for hardcore matches. One night he told his girlfriend about it and she said we should drive down there, since I could never force myself to walk down to the end. I was against this, but they and my girlfriend talked me into it. So we piled into her car and went on an adventure. As we went around the curve on the road, we saw her, the woman in white standing under the streetlight. We all saw her, so at least I knew my friend and I weren't crazy. His girlfriend drives down to the end of the road and we see her the entire time until we get to the light. 
once we reached where she was, we couldn't see her. We scanned the tree line looking for movement in case she jumped into the trees. And we missed it, but the leaves are still in the night as quiet. We turn around and start to drive away, and as we leave, we look behind us and she's there again. Just popped out of nowhere. I proceeded to freak out and tell everyone I need to get out of there. But my friend has to use the bathroom badly. I tell him to hurry up so we can leave. And we stop to where she can't see us. There we find a burned up car, and my friend said he's going to pee on it in case she dies in it. I beg him not to do it, but this time he doesn't listen and proceeds to urinate on the car. That's the last thing I remember before opening my eyes 15 minutes later, lying in my girlfriend's lap a few miles from where we were. They said once my friend started urinating on the car, my eyes rolled back in my head, and I started saying they're coming for us, we need to hide, over and over again. Not too sure about that last part, honestly, because as I said, I blacked out. But that's what they told me. Anyhow, that's my story of the woman in white. I've never moved back down that road after dark in 21 years. The friends in this story seem like the dumbest people I have ever heard of. If someone is telling you that the literal ghost you're all seeing is giving them bad vibes, you listen to them and leave. The gall of the one dude peeing on a burning car that might have been the vehicle the woman died in was just plain disrespectful and a horrible thing to do. Aside from the glaring red flags of the friend and the girlfriends, I do feel bad OP was the one who suffered because of their idiocy. Side note, but why is it the women always appear to be wearing white in these stories? Story 4. Oh man, I have a few stories, but one still freaks me, and at the very least freaks my dad out. Long story short, I grew up in the middle of nowhere with not very much to do for teens. There was an old churchyard people thought was haunted. So when I came home from college on break, the churchyard got brought up, and we all wanted to experience it for ourselves. There is so much lore to its history. It's hard to tell what's fact or fake. However, some truths were that it was one of the oldest graveyards in our area, and there once was a church, but it had burned down way before my family came about. That particular night, we walked around, not really doing much and a friend decided we should stand in a circle with our backs facing each other and turn out our lights. After turning the lights back on and without thinking, I just started walking away from the group into near pitch blackness towards three headstones. Before I got too far away, a friend grabbed my arm and tried getting my attention, but I was solely focused on that area. Eventually, he got me to turn back to the group and we walked around, so we were on higher ground behind those three headstones. That's when me and the other girl noticed something odd watching us. I say odd because I honestly have no clue how to describe it. I went very calm. She freaked. She ended up leaving shortly after that, but I was with the second group. And we left a couple minutes after them. While walking out and my mind question marks slash in reality, I saw a woman in this very detailed white dress with an old half lace veil watching us. And that's when I freaked. We later met up with the group and the girl who left said she saw the same woman and described her to the very same detail I did, which scared the boys. I drove home, completely shook, and tried to sleep with all of my room lights on. The second I felt okay enough to close my eyes, a rough woman's voice whispered, it's okay to turn the lights off. Now I almost puked. My dad walked by my room three hours later to me shaking in my bed, totally unable to sleep. Scared the daylights out of him too. Whatever the freak that was, it really made me question a few things. Story 5 The main house of the place me and my partner rent is on the second floor. There is one set of long stairs leading down the ground level from the front door and another set of stairs leading down from the back door. We can always tell when we have visitors because you can always hear the footsteps ascending and the handrail clanging as they make their way up. A few years ago, in the middle of the day, my partner and I were just chilling on the couch in the lounge room, aimlessly scrolling through our phones or whatever, when suddenly we hear the sound of someone slash something charging up our backs at of stairs. Now this thing was heavy and fast, and the sound of it coming up those stairs was thunderous. Our cat, who was laid out on the lounge room floor in the warm sun, stares out through the kitchens and the back door, jumps up, and arches its back the way they do when they feel threatened. My partner and I look at each other, completely panicked. I immediately leap up, thinking a home invader is about to burst through the back door and murder us. Adrenaline kicks in. I'm all amped up and ready to defend the castle. But thinking I was about to get killed in the process, 
because the weight of the footsteps sounded like someone thrice my size. I sprinted to the back door, but there's no one there. Look out the back window, nothing. Scan the fenced off backyard, not a trace. This whole event happened in the span of 10 seconds at most. It only took me a couple seconds to reach the back door and it would be impossible for someone to escape running back down the stairs jumping off the back balcony, make it across the yard and scale the fence in the amount of time, in broad daylight without being seen or heard. It was honestly as though the largest person you can imagine sprinted up the back stairs and disappeared into thin air the moment they reached the top. I never experienced anything quite like it before or since, but I still think about it often because of how abrupt and mysterious it was. The lingering sense of menace after it occurred and the fact, but I just don't have any explanation for it. Stuff like this is especially scary because you almost always stay on your guard every time you hear a similar sound, even if every single time has a reasonable explanation. Just the constant adrenaline and staying on your guard can really take its toll on people for years to come. Story 6 Not sure if this experience was paranormal or not, but it still creeps me out. My partner and I wanted to try camping out in my very small car, So we drove out a few hours from the city. It was getting close to dusk, so we parked the car in a clearing near a drive and campsite. We had a bonfire, cooked some food, and by the time we were eating, it was pitch black outside. We decided to settle in and sleep in my car. My car is very small, and I was sleeping in the back with the seats lowered. I was curled up and had a hard time falling asleep. I doze off and wake throughout the night. Just around past midnight, I was wide awake and couldn't sleep. So I was staring out the rear window at the night sky. I saw a flashing beam of light in the woods that would flicker on and off and disappear for a while before shining again. It looked almost like lightning flashes, except it seemed to be in the trees. At first, I thought it was people walking through the woods, but it kept repeating throughout the night. I was awake for a few hours and the light kept shining in patterns coming from the same direction. They would stop for a long time, but then flash again like lightning. Mind you, the woods are dense and there are no campers in the direction where the beam was coming from. Also, it seemed to be shining towards the sky, so it doesn't make sense for it to be someone's flashlight. The next morning we were heading out around 6 a.m. As I was driving out, I kept my eyes peeled for any possible light sources, but there was nothing but trees. There were train tracks with a crossing sign on our way out and I considered whether the light may have been reflecting off of them. But the location of the sign and the direction of the lights didn't make sense. To this day, I'm still wondering what the hell that was. That night was definitely one of the worst sleeps I've had in a while. Story 7. Mine dates to the year 2017. We have three rooms and one living room. In my family, we don't have rooms assigned to us. I used to sleep in the last room of the house, and we call it Munderwala camera, or the temple room. That's where we have our small temple. We never kept any light on, so everything was as dark as a coal mine. I was sleeping, and then suddenly I woke up because it felt like someone had touched my thigh. I could feel the lingering effects of the touch on my leg. I couldn't understand what was happening as I was suddenly awoken out of a deep slumber. I blinked my eyes, but the room was so dark that all I could see were orbs that form when you can't see properly or shut your eyes too tightly. I tried to go back to sleep, but somehow I couldn't. My heartbeat was insanely high and it felt wrong. I decided to go and check if my brother was playing a prank on me. He is not someone who does that, but I was ready for any sane explanation. He slept in the adjacent room. When I checked, he was dead asleep. I decided to sleep in that same room because I wouldn't be able to sleep alone. As soon as I laid down and switched off the light, mind you, I was awake. Someone scratched my hair and feet together. This was it for me. I got up, woke my brother up, asked him again if he did all that, and he was confused. He asked me to go back to sleep. I decided to not take any risk and told my parents. My dad asked me a few questions, but my mom cut him off and told me it must be a mouse. I slept with my parents that night. I was 21 at that time. Until now, I cannot sleep alone. Like I said in the fifth story, Some of these experiences can leave people absolutely traumatized after such a small occurrence because it leaves you with such a lingering feeling of either feeling uneasy or just safe. I hope OP is able to get psychological help if they need it so they can go back to sleeping alone sometime in the future.
Story 8. It happened about five years ago, when I was like 11. I live in a Singapore hub, which is basically a building with different levels, and each level having a few houses. My room's window was facing the quarter, and I was just merely watching YouTube and packing my bag at night for school the next day. She was not on my window and dumb-butted me and thought it was a good idea to look at what it was. I didn't see much, but I'm easily scared by many things, so I freaked out a lot. What I saw was a really skinny finger with a long nail, at least 15 centimeters or 6 inches long. My eyes widened and I froze, so I just looked down, closed my eyes, covered my ears, and yelled for my dad. I used to read horror stories and thought that people were so dumb to just freeze and not run away when they get scared. But I realized why, at that moment when it happened to me, my dad was drunk and asleep in the living room. So I just stayed in fear calling for him for like a minute straight. And throughout, I could hear the knocking on my window getting louder and louder. Fortunately, my dad finally woke up and came into my room. I couldn't sleep alone that night. I still sleep in the same room today, and sometimes I get chills thinking about it when I'm about to sleep. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.